Look, you guys, most of you at this table are married. Uh, I know yeah, you got three, three, three out of five are married. No, I, went, yeah. I went through a divorce. Yeah, yeah. you were before. Yeah. I'm not married. I've never been, right? My perspective is this, and I can't take full credit because a friend of mine, uh, Evan, um, wrote a, a screenplay. And uh, there was a line that he wrote in the screenplay that, like, it just, and I can't even, the way he wrote it was more beautiful than what I can explain. But basically, the character in the, in the script said, when you get married, you're marrying three persons. You're marrying the person that that person was, who they are today, and who they will be tomorrow. And those are three distinct people. You're marrying her today because of who she is today, right. and, you, and this is who you fell in love with. But you're marrying who she used to be also because there might be some untreated trauma that you know will probably you know, life issues. experience yeah. and stuff, issues, issues that yeah. might come back and all that. But then you're also committing to the person that she will be in the future because change is inevitable. Change happens. Right. And I'm saying she, but you know, this goes for both people, both like sides. for both right. sides, the husband and the wife. You're marrying that whoever that person is going to be in the future. So the question is, are you willing to take that chance and that risk of who this person might be? Because we all change over time. Maybe the core of us, you know, doesn't really change, but there are life lessons and there are things yes. that we go through. We're completely different when we you're evolve. 70 and 60 evolve. years yeah. old, right? <laughs> yeah, you evolve from when you were 20 or 30 or 40. Right. So there's already, there's risks involved. The problem that I have is emotions. Emotions are fickle. <laughs> mm. Okay, they're fickle. <laughs> Do you define that? Yes. So right now, I feel good. Right, I'm with my boys. I'm happy with y'all. Yeah. Uh, right. So I feel good. I'm on this podcast. There's people right. listening, and maybe our views are going up. Click subscribe. Um, <laughs> but I feel good, right? But then you know, when on on the drive home, somebody might cut me off in traffic, and my feel good goes turns to anger real quick because I do suffer from road Changes rage. Changes like a little John anger. Exactly. Yeah. exactly right? I do suffer from road rage when we drive in the slow lane, bro. Right? Okay. See, <laughs> yeah. I'm, about, I'm about to summon from Sam Rage in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you know how to push my buttons. Um, no, but see, but but that's exactly so. Feelings change, and I don't like that about human beings. Mm -hmm. We are not really consistent. We're, we're consistently inconsistent in terms of our emotions, and that's what kind of scares me about all being in any relationship. Because even with uh, our boys, right, uh, I might say something innocently. But really piss you off because I offended you in some way. Now we can work it out. And we're boys. We can, you know, forgive each other for that. But our, our emotions changed in that moment. And when you're in a relationship with someone, her feelings might change. Mm -hmm. Right. And she, she might want something different just because she feels like it. Mm -hmm. There's no real true rhyme or reason. It's, that's a risk. That's a scary thing. And I think a lot of, you know, I, I don't want to make it about men or women, but I think a lot of people, Go with their emotions, and that's a dangerous. That's a dangerous thing. But anyway, what do you guys think about that? I, you know, it kind of seems like the challenge of a long term commitment. Yeah. Well, let me explain. So, what if you fall out of love in that marriage? What if you guys just get stuck in the mundane task of work, pay bills, go home? I'm too tired. Work, pay bills, go home. I'm too tired. Weekend, I need to rest up for Monday. Work and repeat where you're not pouring into that relationship because you're just too tired of that mundane task and you fall out of love. And biblically speaking, that's not a reason for divorce. There's no irreconcilable Agreed. differences. Agreed. But that is a challenge in today. Other than infidelity. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That infidelity is, is, you can divorce for that, biblically speaking. But that is a challenge of marriage and long term commitment is falling out of love. One person grows for the better or for worse. You have to deal with that or vice versa. But let's say you're growing because you want to do something and, your other partner, male or female, is bringing you down. So that is a risk worth diving into. And you guys have been married for, you know, 10 plus years. Yeah. Shit, my marriage was fired. I got tired. So uh, that's something to talk about. How do you guys work on challenges of long-term commitment and reigniting that spark? Because that is a risk when you get married as well. Just the mundane. It's a slightly different topic from the question I was asking. So I, really, I want to get back to that, but yeah. I want to know how you have changed or how your wives have changed from when you guys were, you know, how were you when you got married, Sam? You were what, 28, 26? 26. 26. And, and so, and, and Keisha was the same age? 
yeah, or roughly the year behind me. Right. So how has she changed from her 26 year old self to she still looks 26, but I know she's 30, right? <laughs> she's 30. She's she's awesome. <laughs> 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 she's not taking that bait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just saying. Trying to get her to come on to an angry. I know. Like, hell no. Nah. She ain't gonna love me. <laughs> she's gonna love me. I'm not after this conversation. <laughs> you like me? Well, you will not be invited back for Thanksgiving. I'm I love coming. you. I love you, Keish. We hungry. Oh man, uh, that's uh, a loaded question because um, yeah. <laughs> she's not the same person, but her core is still the same. Yes. She's always been loving. Her foundation, her foundation. Yeah. Soft spoken. It's never about her. She never mm. brings any attention. She's not seeking worldly attention. Mm. She's she loves family. She loves life. And she doesn't need the finer things. She's she's very content with life and grateful for it. Um how she's changed is um, she's able to focus on herself. Mm. And a lot of ways she grew up, she grew up fast, having to take care of others that wasn't her responsibility, but she had to she pick had to up that baton and run with it. Mm. And now she gets to finally settle into what she likes to do, mm. which where she wants to go, where she doesn't want to go. Um, being front and center in the home and not being to spreading herself thin. Mm. That's how she's changed. And there's many more ways we can go down this rabbit hole, but um, I've seen her grow in herself Mm -hmm. to just be naturally herself and not stress over things that are out of her control that she was trying to fix and handle. And I'm so grateful to see her enjoying the day to day versus stressing over the day to day. And how how have you changed Um, in that same time period from 26 to 30? I think think my change has come from just my walk with God. Mm -hmm. Um, I credit him for all the things that are going good. And I credit him for the things that I need to improve upon because he has shown me myself in my errors, in my ego, in my ways. Um, but I think what's helped me, I'm, I'm more confident, but more humble. Mm. And um, I'm, I know I don't have the strength. That's where I see my superpower. It's not me, it's him. I've, I've settled into him being my leader and commander in chief. And so that's where I've grown. And knowing I don't have the abilities to carry this weight daily, I need to rely on him. Yeah, and, and that's been a 10 year journey of a transformation of understanding that. And what's helped me in our marriage is understanding where she lacks is probably my fault. Our so relationships they, are is. mirror images of ourselves, and mm-hmm. we don't realize that as men, mm-hmm. that we think, oh, they're not doing this, they're not doing that. Well, the Bible commands us to love our wives. Mm-hmm. So if you're not that's loving Ephesians. her, <laughs> thank the you. Way Christ, yeah, loved the church. Ephesians, Christ, yeah. Christ loved the church. So if you're not right. loving on them, right? we yeah. think stereotypically women are supposed to be the nurturers, the lovers, and mm-hmm. showcase that. And that's fine, but God ordained men to love wives. That's correct. Mm-hmm. So if we're not showcasing love to our women, why you think you're not getting any affection or any respect. intimacy or respect, which is our love language. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it's reciprocal. It's it's checks and balances. So I've learned how to mirror love to her better than me just expecting to receive it without giving it. So um, I've grown in so many ways in that sense, and it's been helpful. So it sounds like you've not only changed, but you've matured and you've changed in a positive direction. You've grown. I hope so. I hope so. The, the, the saga continues. You know, check with me on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You said emotions change, change and mm-hmm. stress mm-hmm. And with life and things like that. So, yeah, I have my ebb and flows and ups and downs. So, trust me, I haven't mastered anything. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to figure out how to stand on that pole like Daniel's son. <laughs> and, 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 and kick and land back yeah. on that one leg, you know, <laughs> so I can take out Johnny, the devil. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sweep the leg. Sweep yeah. the leg, you know, <laughs> it comes to sweep the leg, you know, life leg. comes at you fast. And furious, song but, locks off. Yeah. yeah, so I'm still in the, in the lab working. What about you, Rome? Same thing. Have you, how have you guys have changed or, you know, over um, time? I'm, I'm going to have to just rewind just a second because Sam spoke serious truth and Sam and I had a conversation about I almost say six weeks ago mm. that he wrecked me because mm. what he said is true we are to love our wives we are to be the head of our family and there was aspects of that that he said he, real talk 
you're just receiving what you're putting out. And that hurt when I heard that. Mm-hmm. I had to process that. And I'm like, wait, no, I'm not standing. I'm like, no, I'm doing this right. And he's we like, had a similar hey. conversation. Right. Like, he's he's talking about, talking about uh, you and I going to have to talk, bro, because you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Things have changed. Um, changes in the wind. So um, I commend you, Sam. Actually, if y'all don't know, like, the gents at this table are, like, and the, they're elites, and I don't give that title lightly. Um, uh, and I love, I love Larry, I love, uh, Nate. You come into the, the atmosphere recently, but thanks for having me. You two, you, y'all done messed me up for the better. Amen. <laughs> okay. Um, Amen. And and I and to go back to what you were asking, uh, Larry. A lot has changed over the last fifteen years, but what I've learned about me and what I've seen me is, and I want to say it's also positive and a negative. And God's working on me. I am more ambitious and driven than ever before. Um, I aspire and I have higher expectations of myself because I've been fortunate to see what God has seen me. And I know I can do better. I should have been doing better. I've been holding back for my family and they deserve better. And so for me, um, I've had to face myself and look to be you know, Michael Jackson big man in the mirror because who I was seeing I thought I would I, I, I had all my st- stuff together I was almost going I was almost going to cut stuff <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I thought I had all my stuff together you know I'm like I'm achieving these goals and I have all these accolades and you know for where I'm at in life at my age I'm doing pretty good mm-hmm. and to realize it's all meaningless it's all dirt on a rag and I think for me, now that I'm able to see these things and realize that I have not been given, I have not been loving my family the way Christ has wanted me to. Right. That's forced me because I, once I once I know that I know, that's not acceptable. Like I have, I better change. If I don't change, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have issues with me, mm-hmm. and that's not acceptable because. He deserves better. I serve a God who saved me from so much mm-hmm. and pulled me out of so much crap. Mm-hmm. I better serve him. Mm-hmm. And if I can't bring my best to the table, which he gave me wonderful kids, he gave me a loving wife. So if I'm not going to step to the table and do my best, like, I don't deserve to enter his, his atmosphere. Mm-hmm. So, so I, and I say that because... I've been running with Sam now for three years. I've been running with Lando for at least two. No, I take it back. I've been running with you for four and a half years. Mm-hmm. I've been running with you for three years. Mm-hmm. And ever since I met, and, and you you were in this atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. You, you were in the stitch in the Yeah. 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 Um, no joke, man. I am not who I was when I met Larry. And I'm not who I was when we broke bread back in Colorado. Mm-hmm. I'm not the man granted. I still We still have a lot of work to do. Yep. But I'm not that same man when I sat down at Cheesecake Factory. So by God's grace, I know I've been growing. And this last month and a half, I am not that man. And I was like, look at stuff. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, oh, trust me. God shows up in all the funny yes, places. Yes, the funniest places. <laughs> Liquor stores and all. Liquor store in India. <laughs> so, I mean, so changes happen. Changes happen. And I, and I could say this. That change has been hard. It, it's messed me up. I've had to deal with emotions that I hate. I hate emotions. I hate feelings. And I say that. And I don't say that lightly. Because they like, be lying to you. They be mm. lying to you. Be like, oh, you feel. No, you don't. You feel like crap. Feel it. Own it. And walk through it. Because it's his strength that will carry you through. You know, so all that can be said, I know he's still, the work he started, he's not done yet. Yeah. So I know I'm changing. My wife, I have to give that to God. And she's grown and she's changed. But I can't expect her to change and me not change. Mm-hmm. So I'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. All right. That leaves you, Lando. Mm-hmm. The, other, the only other married person on this, yeah, on this cast. Oh, so. um, Mandalorian. Over the here. Mandalorian. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the way, bro? <laughs> this is we're, the way. We're go mm-hmm. You know what? It's, it's just been about growth. It's been about God. Just like these, these two brothers said, it's been about God. I was the most selfish person when we got married. I was totally dedicated my wife to my wife, but I didn't understand the foundation of what being a man was and what it meant to really lead a family or doing any of those things. I was so messed up when we got married. I had my bank account. She had her bank account. 
I expected her to pay the bills, but I wouldn't give her my account information so she can get the money out of my account to pay the bills. She was like, well, how am I going to pay the bills if I can't get the account yeah, information? That, that makes sense. And I was just like, what am I doing? I didn't fully trust. I have never given anybody <laughs> my bank account yet, my right. bank account information yet. Yeah. So that's where you have to let that do. Let there was no cell phone. Mm-hmm. And that's where I first started. The biggest revelation I had was, okay, Kira, of course, she's my wife. I have to give the bank account information. And it wasn't, it was no longer about me. It started to be about us. Mm-hmm. And that was through the strength of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've had my ways, no doubt, no if answer bust about that. Uh, the best, but the best way I've grown is through spiritually with her as us growing together. My wife, I have no problem saying that she was the spiritual leader in our household. Absolutely. She was having me come to Bible study and these things. Cause me, I want to watch sports and see the Warriors game and see the Niners. And I was not feeling the word as much, but now I have the roles are starting to change. I'm getting much more spiritual now, much more into our word and. The last, especially the last uh, several months, I've been saying, come on, baby, we've got to do Bible study before I go to work. Because we do our Bible study, study typically at about uh, uh, 5.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then we work out and then I, I hit, we want to start start each day out with the Word. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's, the, that's the best thing I can say. And the way she's grown, she, my wife, is just, she's always been fantastic. She's always been fantastic. The biggest thing she's done is found her voice more. Me as a man, I you know, I thought I still was I had some dominating personality things with her. I'd overtalk her, I'd outthink her when we'd argue, I'd kill her on an argument, but she she learned that she evolved. She like the range, adapted, overcome. She started taking notes in our arguments and started using my words against me by because she goes, No, I got the note. This is what you said. And I, and I said I started losing the arguments, but here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I started, when I started losing the arguments, but it wasn't about losing. Yeah, I'll get it was that, about man. us working together yeah. towards the solution of a problem, not me beating her. I came from a family where you're supposed to win, but we're supposed to win together. She's not my adversary. Amen. She is my partner. And that's the biggest thing I've learned throughout our marriage. She is not. Uh, my my foe. I said, when we argue, you are not my friend. You are you're the person I'm arguing with. She goes, no, I'm always your partner, whether we agree or something or not. But we have to work towards that solution. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I don't like that she was taking notes. Oh, oh she's oh, hey, hey, but if we I have did. issues, she takes no. She wanted because I would flip things. So I didn't say that. What I said was, she going, oh no, mm-hmm. this is what you say. Because here's the uh, note right here, and I, mm-hmm. and, I, and, you know, and I was just like, oh like, you're man. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. Yeah. It was yeah. absolutely needed. And now we rarely argue. And when we talk, well, we'll sit down like here. I don't like this. I, don't, I disagree with this. And we'll sit down and we'll discuss it. And sometimes we come up with great solutions. Sometimes we don't. And sometimes we say we don't agree to disagree on this. But it's nothing that's been life altered or changed where I'm, I'm not speaking to her anymore or anything like that. I don't that. take it too personal no, I don't, anymore. It's never too personal because in the end, I don't like to argue with her. She doesn't like to argue with me. We yeah. want to get along. 90, probably 95% of the time we get along. Uh, but the 5%, uh, we, we do bump heads, but we have a solution to try to work it out as a, as a team. So that's how you both have grown. It's not Absolutely. Like, both of us. Uh, Absolutely. Both of guys are yes. Absolutely. Uh, well, that answers my question. I'm taking mental notes too because okay. I'm not married and, uh, you know, maybe one day I will be. And I just I want to I'm trying to absorb this stuff from you guys and you know with, with, with more experience. And yes. Just, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm super scared right now. So, uh, uh, we got you. We got you. All right, sorry, sorry Nate, bro. No, no, that, no. Move no, on no. to the next section. No, not that we started off because it is in Proverbs in chapter 18, verse 22. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Mm-hmm. So going back to the walls, the deal with I'll sign the paperwork. That's another topic because right. I believe in Genesis it does say we have to obey the laws of the land. Mm-hmm. And in Romans yes. it does say you have to obey your government as right. long as it isn't. Uh, and Caesar, what is due to Caesar. Caesar. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. But it probably is corrupt because politics are politics and God is God. So um, going back to finding good, when a man finds a good wife, he finds a good, she finds a good thing. A what? When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. I'm ready here. Yeah. When a man finds. The Bible says that a man finds a wife, he's found a good thing, obtain fear from God. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Now, what is a good wife? That's one. What is a good wife? Because some of these women are going to be like, yeah, you heard that? With my ring? Yeah, put a ring on a Beyonce style. But what is a good wife? Uh, I'll let you guys answer that because it does answer in the Bible. I want to hear what you guys mm-hmm. say. Yeah, it's simple. Proverbs 31. That's it. Proverbs 31, chapter 10, so verse 31. Say it. 
Oh, it's a it's a good chapter. You should read it. Right. I can't quote the whole thing. Trust me, it's a good chapter. Don't read the Bible at home, folks. No, I mean there's aspects of, of explaining because uh, I remember with Cheryl, uh, that woman she digs. She digs. That's what we call getting in the word. She digs and she digs hard. Um, and she but for a good period, she she literally tore her Bible apart reading it. And so I went back found a place to have it uh, rebound. And um, I had it rebound, and on the side of it, I had Proverbs 31, and it's etched inside, or on the, on the uh, side of the page. Thank you, on the side of the Bible, right. Um, and the interesting thing about that is, I can't, I can't give you verses, or I can't give you the exact addresses, but, yeah, right. but the, the main part of it was like, a woman, um, she will tend to her own field, she will make sure that her family is clothed, she will nurture them and love them. She will pour into her husband. She will acknowledge that her husband is respected in the city and at the gate. And that when she stands in before others, that she will be honored. And it's like, we, by our who we are in our name, I really believe in the power of our name. God has called, I mean, Samuel said, when he announced his names like two to three times to make sure you know he's talking to you kind of thing. But in that aspect, in our names, they supersede us. It's not just Romolo, it's the Minas. Like the Minas, mm -hmm. she steps in as a Minna. So when, oh, she, oh, that's, you know, Romolo's wife, that's Cheryl Minna. The name supersedes us. She's guarded by everything that we have already set forth. And it's very interesting in that because in Proverbs 31, it asks, there's aspects of what they do is what builds us up. That's what motivates us. That's what's allowed me to be so ambitious now because she's poured into so much. And and it, she literally, to me, she does exuberate Proverbs 31 in so many ways. And I think that's the best way. I mean, granted, not everyone's spiritual, not mm -hmm. everyone follows Christ. Very true. But it is a true breadcrumb guideline to what a true woman, wife, should be. I have it right here if you want me to read it. Oh, yeah. Go break it. Break it. All right. It's beautiful, Rome. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10. Through 31. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out of sight. In her hand, she holds a distaff and grasps a spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to pour and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household. For all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate. Yeah, you don't want to come to that city. You're like, mm, she is wife at home. Damn. Where he takes seats among the elders of the land. She makes some linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of the idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but she can surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. Mm -hmm. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can see women listening listen to this and, okay, you want me to work. <laughs> you want me to make this. You want me to clean the vineyards. You want me to take care of the kids. You want me to take care of my husband. You want me to honor him, do all of these things. And so that I can see that biblical stuff. But I don't see that as, as realistic in today's times. But it's a bigger risk to go into a marriage without God in it than it is 100%. to go into it with God in it. And granted, I mean, no one says it's going to be easy. This was written thousands of years ago. And you want a hot plate. Don't bring that shit cold. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I mean, it's all relevant, especially because it can be applied to Nate. I can't stand Nate. <laughs> I, I want the world to know. I didn't say, bro, I'm Nate. 
one in the middle. Pick the one in the middle. Pick the one in the middle. Yeah, this one. I, I see don't, three of them. I don't. I don't like them. All right. <laughs> the one in the middle. You got to train me in a couple of weeks, bro. Bro, we're gonna work on you, baby. Yeah, we are. I'm on the prayer list. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on Sam's and you're on mine. That's it. <laughs> hey, you're on mine. Hey, you're on mine too. That is bad. You on mine too. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> the one we go with it, bro. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, just granted, they, you know, these words, they're living things. Yeah. 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 Granted, we're not asking you to go become the CEO of some Fortune 500 company. But if you are at a place, and we're talking about for all of us, I mean, we, we all live in the West Coast. We all live in California. This, our state primarily is a two-income state. You need two incomes to survive this culture and walk in this culture. But here's the thing. That doesn't mean you have to go make, you know, high six figures. It's like, even your willingness to pro help provide or contribute. It's not provide because that's our role, right. but to contribute. Or, hey, if it's like, you know what? You're up just as early as I am, and you're getting the kids ready to school while I'm getting ready for work. And thank you for making me breakfast. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't have to go out on an empty stomach. Go, and I loved your phrase last week or last time. Go, you know, bring home a buffalo. Yeah, you know, it's like there, there's aspects of the contribution. And it's like your husband is building a name. For not just himself, but for the family. And you get to receive those blessings in that. When you go and step into the, the, the store, if you're in the mall or something like that, and it's like, oh, hey, that's Cheryl. Oh, hey, how you doing? You, your, your name is extended beyond who you are. And it's like these attributes that we, that God has laid out, they're not just so, you know, the man can feel good about it. It benefits you. And it's like these blessings are blessings for a reason. And it's like they can still be applied. We, you know, it's like, oh, you know, she goes out and gets, you know, purple um, uh, sashes. It's like, you know what, baby, thank you for going picking me out a new blazer. I appreciate that. It feels good. Man, I, I love a good suit. I don't get to wear them often, but put me in a good suit and I'll just feel like a million dollars. I don't care if you got it from Walmart. Tarche. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. This table going down. <laughs> My point is like, but she would have a willingness, and what she was able to get that from what she contributed. I'm not asking you. It's like these attributes and, and, and qualities still apply today, and it's like, don't discard them because there's there's so much gold and weight in them. Because the better you stand, the better the husband stands. The better the husband stands, the better the family stands. The better the family stands, the name. The name will supersede all. Because we all do it for Christ. Everyone at this table does it for Christ. Yeah, that's interesting. So uh, one thing I love about the answer is everything goes back to God. No matter what for questions us. that I've asked or that Nate has asked, everything goes back to God. And I think that's a, a, a wonderful thing. Um, so let's keep that going. However, I... I think sometimes we don't answer the question directly. Okay. So if we say what makes a good wife out, well, we kind of, we're a little bit specific with the, with Proverbs, but if we had to list, I don't know, three or four or five things, like, cause I'm just concerned with people listening that not everybody's listening uh, right. is, is of Christ. Right. right. So, Absolutely. So to cater to them a little bit, to give them something, we can still keep it biblical or keep it spiritual, but what are some things that, you know, they can walk respect. with tangibly? Respect. respect. So respect. a wife is respectful. Like, she's respectful. Okay. She, don't get me wrong. We're not, I'm not saying that you don't get mad. I'm not saying you ain't going to get pissed off. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's not a reason to call me an asshole, a motherfucker, seven times in the city. All right, we're going to our YouTube channel. Oh, no, he, can, he can do that. How many can we talk anyway? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being real. I'm being yeah, real yeah, because yeah. I chose these words. I'm not one to use these words lightly. Yeah, and here's the thing. Right. For those that know me, I don't cuss. So for me to use those words, yeah. there are too many men in this world that get that language spoken to them. And then the sad thing is they turn around and deliver it right back. And that's what corrupts and corrodes our unity. It's like, I need to feel good just as much as you do. So you calling me that? I'm not going to reciprocate. Oh, I should love you. I'm going to rub you. Just, you just got on me because I was playing Madden too long? Dog me for that. Like, 
You could have used better vocabulary. We all got educations. Use use it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you have to subject yourself to four letter words. They sound good. <laughs> feel, feel good. Okay. My favorite cuss word is F word. I don't want to be word. Wait, okay, so. I'm gonna say it for what it is. Rest his soul, Bernie <laughs> Max. They're back in back yes, in sir. King's no, Colony. He had to stand up yeah. where he was able to have a conversation, and he used that phrase, yes, yes. Yeah. "MF." Yeah. You know, and and everybody in that audience knew exactly what he was talking about. Don't be afraid to use the word motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker is enough. <laughs> It describes a person, place, like, okay. thing. I mean, we say it, but there's... You can't have I mean, motherfuckers on me. You know, you know, me 35 motherfuckers on me. I started because it's all bad. But I didn't want to start no motherfucker. <laughs> Lord, I used to have a good party back in the impression of I, I, trash now. Still to this day, I swear he is one of the kings of comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, all that to say, no, no. I mean, yeah, we all laugh about it. And in his context, it was all jokes. But... In the house, in the framework of the what we supposed to have a sanctified area, a place of comfort, those words should not need. I'm not saying don't get mad. I'm not saying you might not say it once in a blue moon. But there's no reason to use it in every sentence just because you got heated, mm-hmm. just because you got pissed. And let alone, I'm gonna say it. There's no reason. I'll take that back. No man should feel comfortable. Dropping the D word to his loving wife. Mm. Or Granted. Gr- or girlfriend. Or girlfriend. Or girlfriend. I, well, right, right. Yeah. No, I, but I'm just, I mean, yeah, sorry, the context was, but I'm saying, I'm calling it out. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you say. I'm a big enough grown man. I don't care. I'm telling you, from me and the gents I roll with, there's no reason for it. I think, I think you're all saying in any relationship, um, that we consider a good woman is fighting fair. That she doesn't hit below the belt. She do. Um, or you. Well, yeah. You, you don't want anyone. Some, this is true for both anyone. Parties, yeah. Anyone, yeah. Right? Anyone. And, you know, I think it's different for every household. I think that's, this is a tough question because what you like, I may not like. And yeah. what, what, what floats your boat may not, it might sink my ship. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's It's different. We put each other in a box when we say what makes someone a good this or good that. I understand the context of the question and we want to give some real examples, but what's good to you, you need to identify that and, 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 and really pour into it, really nurture it if you want it to flourish. And okay. so there's good people everywhere. I met a lot of good people on this journey in life. It doesn't mean they were yoked for me for marriage. Right. Well, it yeah. doesn't mean that's someone I can roll with and rock with every day. We might vibe because we like Wu Tang. And I might mm-hmm. hang out with my homegirl that likes baseball. Doesn't mean that she's a good woman for Sam Thompson. Right. So it's different. So you got to f- identify that yourself and then pour into that. No, I, I agree with you, but there are some basic principles that I think are universal. So yeah. for me, I think it's respect. Uh, I think it's nurture. True. And I think it's, uh, in, in terms of spirituality, it's you're equally yoked spiritually. I struggle with that, but I like that you brought that up. Yeah, because if you have those three things, and this goes for men too, not, you know, what makes a good husband, it's the, kind of the same thing, but we're asking what makes a good wife. So if women are listening out there, if you take anything away from this conversation about, okay, I want to be a good wife, what is it? Uh, to men, it's, okay, be respectful. Or to Larry. What, so to okay. men or to Larry? Uh, let's, let's make sure. That's why I'm saying this. Yes, yeah, but it's, I'm, it's, saying. I, I'm saying to men. Or is Larry the reason why on the council. I'm speaking on behalf of the council. So how okay. many of you guys disagree with me when I say respect? None of us. Okay. Disagree. How many do you dis- How many disagree when I say nurturing? Um, I I, I disagree. You but, disagree but with nurturing? general, and I'll get. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because we're supposed to love our wives. But no, love and nurture, <laughs> so they, they, that comes from us. They go, they go hand in hand, but okay. it's, it's, it's different. You can love someone, but if you love them, you will nurture them. But some people mm-hmm. are very nurturing and that's, okay. that's the thing. So okay. nurturing is one and ha- equally yoked go, go spiritually. I, I don't, I, I disagree. Don't, okay, cool. Let agree. me tell you why I agree with you. I mean, let me tell you why I think that way. You might, when I say equally yoked, I, what I really mean, maybe I should rephrase it is you guys believe, you believe in the same thing. Cause you might, you might, I think you interpret equally yoked as you're on the same exact level with your walk 
with Christ. Equal. Equal. That's equal. equal. That's 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 equal. I can't always be equally yoked with other believers because the point of meeting in, on this walk is to but meet the non-believers. About that. I know he, I know it does, and but but that's why I struggle men. with for that's men relationship. That's men why versus I struggle Larry. with it. Yeah, that's why. Men I, that's versus not, Larry. That's not. So you, that's so not nobody at this table wants to be with someone who believes the same thing that you. Believe. Of course I do, but when I met my wife, she wasn't in the church. Is what I'm saying. And he's still no, covered. No, it's a different. So, 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 so equally yoke yeah. is part of that spiritual walk that you both believe in God and, and, and Jesus Christ and all that, right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is she or didn't not grow, in some cases, but she right. didn't grow up in that. So if I'm gonna go make disciples and be a witness. She's not equally yoked. So I'm meeting someone that doesn't know God's word and I'm bringing that to her. And because of that, now my wife is baptized in the name of right. the Father's Holy Spirit. If it was you based on equally yoked, we would have never walked on this right. journey period yeah. at yeah. all. Okay. That's, why, wrong, that's, that's why I draw a hard line with yeah. that because we cut people off. And I know why we say that. It's because you don't compromise your walk, walking with those that are not equally yoked. Right. I know why it's brought to that context, but we miss the whole mission that. You're not to, you're supposed to set apart from the world, but equally yoked means you don't hang up with non-believers, but that's what we're trying to say. But we're saying that from a believer standpoint, which yeah. we all are, but even for those who don't, what makes a good wife? So when I say equally yoked, I'm talking from a spiritual standpoint, but it could also mean, because what if they're Buddhists? What if they're uh, Muslim or, or, well, you know, Christians and Catholics. They could be Jewish. They could be Jewish. Like, whatever it is, like, or even if you don't believe at all, you're atheist. Right. You're atheist. Equal in that, in that way, because it's going to be yeah. a conflict there. It's and a conflict. So what I'm trying to do is limitate, yeah. I'm limitate. What, what is, what is eliminate. eliminate? Eliminate. Thank you. I'm trying to eliminate as, uh, as many roadblocks as possible. And so if you're not respectful and you're not very nurturing and, oh, kindness is another thing. If you're not very kind, then we, I don't think any relationship could work. And that's why I want to that, do the same. Are you talking for the men or are you talking for you. Larry? This sounds that's like you're you. talking for Larry. My top five is totally different. Because, yeah, my top five are, that's aren't, why aren't even in yours. Well, wait, you, what's, what's yours? Are we talking about love languages again? No, no, no. You're talking about you. You you standing up for all men, bro. So I'm saying I'm just saying what man out there that sounds like me, you're talking for Larry. But that's you, Larry. Okay, maybe if it is, I just don't feel like there's a majority of men who would disagree with what I'm saying. We all want to be with yeah, a we prioritize. Right. I, I think we yeah, value those things, but we, we prioritize them differently. I'll give you that. Because okay. they're, they're, yeah. they, they're on our radar. You want to be with somebody who's disrespectful to you? No. no, no okay. No, no. You want to be not, with somebody it's, but that's... You label those as your top three. And those are... Of things that make a good wife. For Larry. Larry. But that for doesn't Larry. mean I'm Larry. They my, might my be on our different. radar, yeah. but they aren't our That's top, top three. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, listen, my, my, my guess. My number one is understanding, and you didn't even get there yet. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Like, my list is different than your list. My number one is being selfless. Yeah. yeah see, that's. It's, yeah. It's, they're all different. Right? I didn't even say anything about top three. I was just, I was going down the list and I didn't put Those it in order. Suck. <laughs> Those suck. Cut the tape. Cut the tape. Totally. Cut the tape. Yeah. Joe, get, get, fade us out the black. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 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 yeah. Cut, cut it off, man. Cut this mic off. <laughs> I don't want to hear him no more. No, yeah, I get what you guys are saying. You're trying, you're saying that I'm making it about me, and I'm a part of that. But the reason why I say most men, because of course all of us are different, right? But I don't, like I keep saying, I don't find anybody that could dis- 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 disagree with. And what I'm not I, saying that we do. I just think we all go back to what Randall was saying. The level of or the hierarchy of what is important. Right. I, didn't, I, didn't hire, I didn't put anything in the hierarchy. I just listed them. I didn't say my number one thing is this or my number two is that. I'm just, what the question they asked was what makes a good wife, right. and I said someone who's nurturing, someone who's respectful, and someone who kind. is on is is kind, kind kindness that goes with understanding as well. That's some no, it doesn't. I you can't, you can't. Is different. No, kindness right. and understanding are different. Very different. Yeah, yeah, they're, different. Different. They're, they're, they're very different. They have di- very different definitions, but it's like left hand, right hand. No. How can you be kind to someone you don't? I mean, no, I guess you're right. You nah, you're right. Nah, <laughs> so your good list suck. Out. I'll work back on the brush and break your list. Still hey, suck. Hey, you, Larry, you shout out to Walmart for our sponsor. Larry, you kind of mean. 
But you can't yeah. stand me. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm kind of you, Nate, because I believe in God. That's yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> But right. he wasn't looking. Nah. That much. <laughs> so, 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 at least my point of view with, with that question. I'm talking for Orlando. I'm talking for Orlando. First one with me is selfless. I need someone who's selfless. Respect is going to be um, really important. Next one, I need somebody I'm compatible with sexually. Mm-hmm. I got no problem saying it. And then I need somebody who's a good communicator. And lastly, this is my top five. I need somebody who can treat me as an equal and treat me fairly. Those are my top five. My top five. I'm not speaking for everybody else. This is for Orlando. Now, sex may not even be an issue with y'all or anything like that, but that's, you know, my history and everything like that. That's that's important to me for it to connect that way Mm -hmm. intimately and it could be intimately and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. See you later. I, I, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I understand, but I, I don't think we're answering the question. But that's we are, okay. we are, that we, we are. I know you want to give some general principles out there because everybody. To it's obvious that everybody is different in terms of the particulars. I don't think anybody wants to be with someone who's not understanding or not kind and stuff like that. But what are like the basic principles that are universal? I think. I respect, struggle with that because for sure. we're, we're all so wired differently. We're different. Man. We're all different. And, and, and that's we're why I, I have a, I'm being honest, I have a hard time answering what all men would want because I've seen you can't men answer what all men would want. where the women they pick, it's not good. Right. It's not healthy for them, the type of relationship they're in. And that's what they chose. But so, that's what they chose, but because, it's not good. Because the things they like in that relationship that might be toxic, they vibe in that environment. I couldn't vibe in that. I couldn't vibe in a negative environment. Well, a spouse is always negative, but or, they like that. Or emotional roller coaster. Or emotional roller coaster. They like that ups and down and that. Oh, like the lifetime movie. Yeah. There's cats out there who just love ghetto love. What they call oh, it ghetto yeah, love. Yeah. Yeah. I know cats who like to argue, like to fight. They curse each other out. Right. That's what, that's what I, they are tra- attracted to. I know. Me, I'm not feeling that. You know what's no, funny right. about that? When, okay, when I was at Cal State Florida, State, yeah. I went to a dance show with my niece mm-hmm. and my sister and her husband from Compton. Mm-hmm. They just got turned on over ghetto love because afterwards he's like, hey, Moochie, after this, let's go to a Pollo Loco chicken. You know, she's like, nah, I want, some, chicken. Nah, I want some water cone limon. I want to be wanted down. He's like, nah, Moochie, they got that $10 chicken bucket for the Pollo Loco. And they argued on campus in front of my nieces over Pollo Loco chicken. And Pollo Loco, all that else. But yeah, they got a ghetto mm-hmm. argument over that. Mm-hmm. And even though they got they one voice raised the other, right, one voice raised right, the right. other, I'm over here like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, there's some there's some bull jive. My niece is like, Uncle, I can't I can't stand them. But while they were arguing, you can tell they were getting turned on. Mm-hmm. Erotically. Mm-hmm. I'm on a point like, nah, man, I'm on water call Lee Mo. Like just arguing I'm like <sighs> Yeah. Yeah, some people vibe on some We're, we're like, all yeah. different when it comes yeah. to that. Yeah. We are all different when it comes to that. They would have said all the That's why I just spoke for me. <laughs> Uh, this is my last attempt. I'm just trying to say there are basic strike, strike two, principles. Because what you got all for, 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 for who? For all people. Okay. For no. all people. That, 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 that That's, moral, it's that not moral. about what you like. I'm talking about basic pre- Like, okay, so we all want to be respected. Yes yeah. or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's a basic principle. That's one. one. That's one. So what are the other ones? <laughs> what are the other ones that we all no, can agree with? Sex. Not, I'm not, yeah, sex. He says sex. That's that's what, wait, is that a basic principle for all of us? Good, good sex? sex? No, no. See, you can't be getting now you're getting picky. Because if how is that picky? <laughs> because here's the thing. For her, it might be good. For you, you you not as, as far as you. <laughs> Oh Lord! Let's move on to the next topic. Yeah, we're about to yeah. revisit this. Yeah, yeah. Right this, this one. That, yeah. That's why I say I don't think you can say it universally. Right. That's why I said again. This is for Orlando. I think we're all going to have our uh, proclivities and our, 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 our peculiarities, but that is who who we are. Not that, that defines us. Not all cats. Not all ladies. Not all dudes are going to get down with our or our, our specific. Okay. What makes what makes a good husband? Belly full, balls empty. What makes a good husband? He knew that question was coming. Yeah. <laughs> he answered that question out. What, 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 this is a setup. How did he answer that so fast? I couldn't. I couldn't even Wait. complete. What did he answer that sentence? I already said it. What did he say? That was a snake. He said, "Shoot!" Yeah. <laughs> and shot you in the process. Yeah. 
We're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's close this out.